The flesh and blood market right now is a lot like my basement. It's kind of in shambles. Well, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Today we're gonna have a little bit of an honest dialogue and honest conversation about the flesh and blood market and where I think it is right now. Um, it's, uh, you know, we've had some market setbacks. Um, I've had some basement setbacks. The, the, the correlation and analogy just works great. Every time it seems like things are going better, they get worse. And every time they get worse, they stagnate for a little bit. And then you think they're gonna get better and then they get worse. And that's what's been going on in my basement. This is the analogy. And this is what's been going on uh, in the flesh and blood market. Um, so here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say this twice. This is uh, kind of the point of the video. It's gonna be an interesting, interesting next three months. The last three months have been very interesting. Uh, this next three months is going to be probably, probably the most important three months in flesh and blood uh, secondary market potentially ever. Um, so here's what I'm gonna say. Make sure that you've got your bets in. Like make sure that you're looking at this and, and, and saying, uh, all right, I'm comfortable with my position. I'm comfortable with where I am in this game. I'm comfortable with my collection. I've got the things that I need. Uh, because now, in my opinion, and this is not a, this is, I'm a guy in a flooded basement, okay? I'm not really that important. This is just my opinion. Don't take this as advice. But in my opinion, now, is the time, like now is the time to, to put your bets in. So uh, across the board, we are down 50 to 65%. Now, this was not a problem. This was not a problem back when all the other card games were also down 50, 60%. Uh, but Flesh and Blood has not started to see the the recursion, the increase in value that some of these other card games have seen since their kind of the drop a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. Um, the, the great fall of the TCG marketplace, the popping of the bubble. Um, here's the thing, uh, we're down 50 to 65% still. Uh, and there are certain things, certain assets that are continuing to drop down that I did not anticipate that would continue to drop down. I'm talking sealed alpha boxes. Um, I'm talking uh, legendaries from you know WTR arc. Those are the staples that I thought would hold up a little bit better. Uh, you know things like cold foil commons. Uh, I thought could lose value, and you know it's it's in you know weaker hands or whatever. And uh, anyway, th there's uh, things are gr dropping across the board. So. Um, these 50 to 65 percent decreases are off of the the all-time highs and I think that's an important thing to state uh, they are off of the all-time highs we had um, when Monarch came out if you weren't around when, and when Monarch came out we had uh, the print run numbers were released for WTR for Arcane Rising and it was surprising to all to some people um, it was surprising to some people that Arcane Rising was the same print run as WTR and then we had the print run numbers for Crucible of War come out and it was surprising at how low the numbers were there there were I think it was 37,000 boxes around there and a lot of people anticipated it was going to be like 60,000. So uh, that kind of print run change um, led to a, a high bull market, a high uh, increased market in the cards peaking at kind of monarch release at the top of the tipping point. Um, and then monarch came out and I think we got all got a little bit crazy. Um, we all got a little bit crazy. So here's here's what I want to say. We're going to pick up there. But what I want to say first is that right now, currently in the world of flesh and blood, there are more players than ever before. We are seeing an increased number of player base from week to week, from day to day. Every day, the Facebook fan page grows by a ton. Every day, the, uh, the marketplace grows by a ton. Every day, uh, you're seeing more and more people hop in to, to road to nationals and to get excited for the calling event. You're seeing a lot of people, a lot of increase in uh, people coming into the game, which should give a ton of confidence uh, to the market, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. Uh, and that's just the way that things are. You can't, you can't just say that it should be one way and then it's not and you just keep saying that it should be that way. Um, it, it's not. That's not. We are seeing an increase in player base 
as we're seeing a decrease in value. So um, one of the reasons for that, I believe, is that you're seeing some of the older term players selling a lot of their valuable cards in order to provide the funds to get to the calling events, to, to fund their road to net. I know people who are traveling. I had a guy come to my road to national events from, from, uh, from Florida, and now he's going to Colorado. I mean, they, he's just going everywhere. So um, there's a lot, of, a lot of that going on. Um, but uh, I have this podcast in my, in my Patreon, and I haven't done an, I haven't done an episode for a, a good bit of time because I don't know what to tell people. The, the podcast is called If I Were Investing, and the idea is to take a look at specific cards and take a look at my market data. You know, I do all the market tracking, whatever, and say this is what I would be buying right now. And the honest truth is that if I had more money to buy flesh and blood cards, which I do not anymore, I would be buying anything that's a cold foil or a sealed box because I believe in the game and I believe that the sealed, I, I, I believe that the valuation of all this stuff uh, is too low right now. Um, so I haven't been doing a podcast because it's like, what do I say? Like anything I say is going to end up being wrong because the market is just collapsing. Um, so I, this is the, the meat of this video now. I fully believe that the market is hinging on two things and that uh, the big money in the market is waiting for two things, and these are these two things that I believe this market's waiting for. Number one uh, is the calling, uh, is the calling in Vegas specifically. I think that the market is waiting to see what what does the attendance look like. The market's waiting to see uh, how are the events run uh, and what is the excitement level. And then number two, obviously, I think the market's waiting to see what happens with Tales of Aria. I don't see a ton of people trying to take their their money and put it into Tales of Aria pre-orders. I don't, the, the amount of questions that I get about pre-orders for Tales of Aria is significantly less than Monarch. Um, and I think that that's a lot because we all lost our minds with Monarch and people got burned. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, let's talk about the calling first. First off, the calling, I have no clue what the expectation should be. Um, the, the, if the calling has a large showing, and I don't know what that is. Honestly, the, uh, the 200,000 player announcement that James White said in, in an interview kind of caught me off guard. Uh, if there are 200,000 players, I, I feel like that sets the expectation for the calling Vegas a, a little bit higher than I originally thought. Um, I don't, I don't want to throw a number out there because I, I have no clue. Like I, you, you could paint a picture for me where there are 500 people at the calling in Vegas and you could paint a picture for me where there's 5,000 people at the calling in Vegas. I did um, some research on, on the Magic the Gathering Grand Prix uh, and some of the numbers I found, one of the most significant was 2015 Magic the Gathering Grand Prix, there were 7,500 registered players for the event. So I would not anticipate that we are acting Magic the Gathering Grand Prix level, but I do anticipate that we have, you know, a good chunk of people signed up. And I think that that's gonna be really, really important. Um, if, if the calling is successful, if there is, if there are pictures and photos and videos and vlogs on Kitchen Table TCG of, um, of just seeing all the fun people are having and the large group size and, um, and the excitement for the game, I think that, that allows uh, people who are investing to have some more confidence in the market. So I think the calling is going to be a really essential opportunity for the growth of the flesh and blood secondary market. Um, it proves a lot of the points that we've been saying. People play the game, people love the game, and there's a high high skill level and a high value level to being a high, high level player. Um, so that's, I think, probably the most important thing right now. Uh, the second most important thing, this is still super important, is Tales of Aria. And if we get Monarch print run numbers, and honestly, I don't know what I'm expecting for Monarch print run numbers anymore. I used to say 45,000 was my expectation. Uh, but with 200,000 players, 45,000 first edition boxes, I'm just not there. I don't know. I, I have no clue. Anyway, uh, so I, I think um, I think Tales of Aria, if it's an amazing set, 
I think that it's really good for the market. Um, I think it gives some, some, I think Monarch caught some people off guard with what was included in terms of um, there not being like a generic legendary, right? Like uh, if there was a generic legendary in Monarch that was like the Arknight Skullcap or the Tunic, uh, we might be looking at Monarch differently right now. I don't know, I have no clue. Uh, I think that caught some people off guard. I'm not saying it's good or bad or wrong or right. I don't actually care about that. All I care about is that the game is really good to play. I think that's the, the strongest backbone of the market. And I think Monarch was a fantastic set with great uh, character development and great uh, hero. I mean, you're seeing the success of the decks right now, but you're also seeing it's not too broken where like Kasu is also like super good. Um, but I think for the market, they expected something. I think the investors, the whales, the the high high level, you know, high money people, they expected some sort of generic chase legendary, uh, and that never showed up in Monarch. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to show up in Tales, but what I'm saying is it won't be a shock. It won't be surprising to not see that in Tales, uh, and so. I think the market won't have as knee jerk of a reaction that it did. Uh, also, the, you know, will LSS learn from Monarch? And it appears that they are. Uh, you know, the print, the unlimited first edition thing all happened at the same time. Now you can get into it in the comment section if you want to talk about uh, what should come first, unlimited or like the, the limited set. Uh, but my point is that they learned, they are trying something new. They, I, they identify that there was an issue in the marketplace where now nobody needs unlimited. Uh, so maybe they printed first edition and a lot more boxes and they got the cards to the players and we're not going to see this craziness. Um, but you know, the, the thing is a lot of us lost money on Monarch and that's on you and me. That's not on LSS. Uh, a lot of us overextended. Um, I know I hear your guys' stories. I get probably every day, probably probably one to two times a day, I get people offering me uh, to buy cases of Monarch. Um, and it, I, I don't, I'm not buying cases. That's not what I do. Uh, go to Alpha Investments, right? Like that's not what I do. I don't, I don't just buy a ton. I don't have the money. I don't have the capital. So, uh, but what I hear from people is I bought too much. I overextended. Uh, I think that's super true for people who were in the hype of Monarch. We were all stupid. We all made stupid decisions. Um, and I don't see that happening with Tails, which is great. That's really, really good for the market. None of us, hopefully, none of us are going to be fire selling alpha legendaries <laughs> to pay for our monarch losses. Like that is what has been happening. People have been fire selling alpha legendaries and sealed WTR boxes to fund their monarch mishaps. Um, and that's crazy and like, that's crazy. Let's not do that again. People did the same thing. They they were buying legendaries for sixty five hundred dollars for five grand of Monarch when it came out. Absolutely crazy. Like absolutely crazy. Um, so uh, that may have been the coal, the coal foil the the uh, the fable. Anyway, you got what I'm saying. People were spending too much money. They were paying thousands of dollars rather than the current market price, which is three hundred. Um, anyway, so. Uh, I don't know. I feel like the things are set up. I feel like it's going to be a really interesting point. Like if, if Tails is successful and if the market doesn't react poorly, if the market doesn't react stupidly and poorly to Tails, I think that we see a huge growth in the market. If people, um, if the secondary market starts off like a regular TCG where like box prices are decent priced and then, you know, we open the singles and they make money back on singles and then you know your singles drop in value 20 to 30 percent and then you know we hit an inflection point and then they start rising in value again that's really good for tails and i think really good for flesh and blood what we saw happen with monarch is people were being stupid and spending tons of money and they the, the amount of money in our market that was just absorbed and lost because people were spending cash, people were spending, um, you know, high value cards and spending cash and then getting things that tanked a thousand percent. That's not gonna happen. I don't think that that's gonna happen again. And I think that's going to give some solidarity and some, um, some growth to the current market. So uh, last, you know, I just wanna say it one more time. It's gonna be an interesting three months. 
Um, and if you care about flesh and blood, if you are somebody who, I'm not even talking about investing. If you're somebody who, like me, like a collector, who like you wanna finish a set and you need to get one more legendary cold foil that's currently $1,300. Um, this seems like a time to put a bet in. This seems like a time to say, okay, I, I'm going to get it now because it's, it, honestly, it's either going to go up or down at this point. Like it, I don't see this stuff. Like st it's been pretty stable for a couple weeks now. And I think everyone and their grandma is waiting to see what happens with tails and the calling. Um, and I have a, I have a ton of confidence that the calling is going to be a success based on the amount of advertising, based on the amount of excitement that I see in my own Discord server. Uh, I have a ton of confidence in that. And I have significant confidence in our marketplace to learn from the mistakes that were made with Monarch. And I have significant confidence that LSS will create a great game. I don't think we need the generic legendary. I don't have confidence that that will be in the set, but like, I have confidence that we learned from Monarch and that this next six months are going to be much, much healthier than the previous three months. So hope you guys have a great day. Remember, this is just my ramblings. This is just my thoughts. Um, don't go and do something stupid and don't overextend yourself. Um, you know, only do this, only only buy find collectible cardboards uh, if you're if you can afford it and your basement's not flooding and uh, and things are going well in your life and you can pay your rent and you can pay for your kids food and uh, do not over extend yourself to buy some sort of fancy piece of paper it's not worth it hope you guys have a great day remember to be kind to the people around you and we'll see you again next video.